Hey, Storytime grown-ups, How are you doing today? I hope you're doing pretty well, and I hope that story or preschool at home is going pretty well for you. Uh, my name is Miss Lisa, and I get to do all of these videos with fun ideas for you that hopefully help you if you are doing preschool at home, if you are just wanting to supplement the learning that your kids are doing elsewhere, um, or if you are just looking for a fun idea to pass a little bit of time, hopefully some of these will be beneficial. Uh, the first one that I have, oh, we're talking all about gardens this week. <laughs> if you want it, you can go pause this, go watch the story time first, and then come back to me. That'd be absolutely fine because it's, I mean, you're just going to me and then coming back to me. So whatever. All right. So in this video, we're going to talk about some fun ideas you can do related to the garden. And one of the first ideas I had is um, an old favorite in story time. And it is, if you have an egg carton, I would probably recommend cutting off two so that you have 10 spots left and then poke a hole in each of them. Just like you can see, I have little holes in there. And then I have in mine little pipe cleaner carrots. So you can see the tops. Um, I also have seen this done if the pipe cleaners are a little tricky to get in and out and it does take a little bit of effort to make all of these pipe cleaner carrots because they are made from obviously cut pipe cleaners that you twist down and then you attach some yarn to be the parts of the carrots that you see, the carrot greens. Um, if that is a little bit too much effort and you happen to have, um, oh goodness, popsicle sticks. Just forgot the word. If you happen to have popsicle sticks at your house, you can do this with popsicle sticks, especially if you can get the like shorter ones. Those would work really well. Um, and you can do the same thing where you plant them, unplant them. The uh, Another idea is that you can make flowers by doing, you know, popsicle sticks again or pipe cleaners as the stem and then adding coffee filters, cupcake liners, um, just pieces of paper at the top to be the flowers and then you can plant the flowers um, One of the things I like about the carrots is you can talk about how carrots grow that we don't see most of what is growing We just see the greens on the top and because carrots are root vegetable All of the exciting part that we eat is down below um, Another reason so one of the reasons oh goodness I really recommend doing this because there's a lot of math involved it is great fine motor, so we are working on that writing, the writing muscles that we need when we are picking. And if you're doing it with popsicle sticks, you are still working on those fine motor skills. Um, so it's really important for fine motor, but there's also a ton of math in this idea. So whether you do carrots or flowers or popsicle sticks, whatever you do, um, this is still a lot of math. And the reason I recommended cutting off two of them so you have 10 is because a lot of the math skills that we will work on in kindergarten are based on tens. So it's based on the facts to get to 10 because that gives us fantastic building blocks for all of the rest of math. So if you can really quickly do seven plus three is 10 in your head, then that helps you with seven plus five because you know the three goes with the seven to make the 10 and then you have two more and that gives you 12. Um, <laughs> so I know that sounds like a convoluted way to do it, but if kids can picture it in their mind because they've been playing with this idea for a long time, they are gonna be super quick at five and five is 10, how to get to fives, how to get to tens. Um, subtracting to get to fives and tens, super helpful with all of their future math skills. So I do want to emphasize that anything we're doing, especially with math, needs to be a hands-on idea. Flashcards are not beneficial to three and four and five year olds are not really even beneficial to most elementary schoolers. Um, some kids do work really well like that, but the more hands-on you can make an activity, the better it will stick in your child's brain, I promise. So we are gonna do uh, lots of different things with the 10 frame, that's just when you have 10. So you can see this one, once I cut off these two, would have two sets of five, which is fantastic. That helps us start to visualize really quickly you know, if I took out these four, 
um, my now first grader would be able to very t quickly tell me five, one, six. Um, so she would be able to tell that really quickly based on sight because she has worked on if the top row is filled, then that's five. If the second row is filled, that's 10. So that's a really quick visual way that they learn. Another thing I did in this that's a math skill is that I made it a pattern. So I don't know if you noticed that, but I had done dark green, light green, dark green, light green. So if you made, say you did carrots and flowers, you could do a pattern with the carrots and the flowers. You could also say, if, if this is too easy for your child, I could say to mine, I see four dark green ones, three light green ones, how many are there all together? And so that starts working on even those math facts that are not to 10 because she'd be able to see, well, that's five and two. So that gives me seven. Um, also, another math skill they'll work on is counting on. So she would say five, six, seven. Um, that's a lot of math in a fun idea. So if your child is just sitting and playing with it, fantastic. Grow in those fine motor skills. If they are ready for a math challenge, you can make that a math challenge really quickly. Um, so it might seem like a little bit of prep, a little prep heavy um, to make all the carrots or flowers or whatever you wanted to plant. I don't know. Um, but whatever you're planting in your pretend garden, it might feel like a lot of effort to make those, but they can get a lot of time and a lot of skills out of that idea. So that's one reason I go ahead and show you that, even though it's a higher prep concept. All right, the next idea I had, whew, that was all the first one. I should, I should get moving a little faster. The next idea I had is um, talking about bees and pollen and why bees are so important to how our plants grow. You can make flowers with, you could do the popsicle stick and um, cupcake liners. The ideas we talked about for making the flowers for the other activity. You can make some flowers, write numbers on the middle of the flower, and then see if you can get the right number of bees in there. So I make bees out of pom-poms. If you have any yellow pom-poms in around your house, you can just draw little circles around them to make them bees, or you can just use them as regular pom-poms. Um, but I like to do this activity with, if you have tweezers, using tweezers. If you have tongs in your kitchen, you can use the tongs because that's still working on those fine motor skills. Or if you don't and you are just working with the pom-poms, just making sure we're picking up the pom-poms with these two fingers helps us grow our fine motor skills. We're also getting in some math if we have the numbers on the flowers to try to put the right number of bees. Or you can call it pollen and then put the right number of pollen pom-poms onto the middle of the flower too. Whatever you want to do fine with me. All right. The next idea is to draw a dream. I was thinking it'd be so fun if your kids could get their imagination going and draw what their dream garden would look like. <laughs> Do you hear the alarm going off? That's going to make it tricky. All right. <laughs> this is real life recording right here. Okay. So if you are drawing a dream, they can make their dream garden, whatever they want it to look like. Or if you are wanting some help creating what your garden might look like this year, you can have them list out some of the plants they want to grow or things they want to eat from the garden and you can go ahead and draw them uh, and have them help you create what your garden's going to look like. That would be very exciting. If you don't have a garden space and you just want to let them get creative, they can draw things like a pizza garden was one of my daughter's suggestions last year, a unicorn garden. You can think of all sorts of things that you can try to grow. All right, the next idea is go out for a dig and see if you can find some worms. Now, I know that a lot of us are probably a little bit about worms, but worms are so incredibly important, um, especially to our food growing. So we want to make sure that we do not pass on our feeling about worms to our kids. Um, so I really, even though I, I don't like to touch worms, I really try to encourage my kids to touch them, pick them up, maybe play with them a little bit, but gently. And then we like to try to rehome them. If we find them in places where they're not going to grow successfully, we try to put them into our garden or our flower beds. Um, so just getting to explore worms for a little bit is, is really interesting. You can always put them in a container with holes in air 
and quite a bit of soil and watch them for a little bit and then return them to the ground. Um, don't keep them overnight. Like they do need a lot of, they need the right amount of moisture and everything. So you can keep them and explore them for a little bit and then put them back into the ground. Um, but I really enjoy watching for worms and watching my kids learn about worms. If you have a magnifying glass, this is a fun use for a magnifying glass because it makes it all seem so much more scientific if we're using a magnifying glass. My kids also like to um, rescue the worms. Like I said, if I'm moving, you know, bricks or some of the edging and stuff like that in our yard, they like to rescue the worms and put them where we would like them to live. Um, the next idea is to grow something. So if you have, um, if you have seeds, fantastic. You can plant your seeds and see what happens. If you don't have seeds, but maybe you ate an avocado recently, you could try um, growing the avocado pit. Or if you cut your celery heart um, about this high, you can start growing that. So there's lots of tips online for ways that you can grow kitchen scraps. So things that you would normally throw away or compost and see if any of those are successful. Um, and I like doing that type of stuff with kids too, because that shows them that we don't have to waste um, and we don't have to spend a lot of money to garden. We can do it for free or very, very cheap. Um, and that is my favorite kind of gardening. All right, so I was also thinking if you're enjoying growing a garden already, you can have your child make crafts for the garden. So helping you make the markers um, to help you remember which plants are where, you can do, there's lots of easy ideas that you can do with your kids for that. Um, you can also make wind chimes or things like that to try to help keep some of the uh, other animals that might want to eat your food out. Um, but you can, there's loads of ideas and I got a little bit overwhelmed with how many I liked. So I didn't bring any specific ones because I wanted you to get to explore that on your own. But growing something and then decorating a garden is a fantastic way to get your child involved in how food is grown or flowers. Um, and then the last idea is to paint or write with nature. So if you have, you know, if you have, say, some dandelions and other stuff is coming up, so, you know, the bees have other things to eat, you could clip a couple dandelions and paint with those. If you don't want to get out paint, you could just get out a little thing of water and the sidewalk and let your child dip the uh, dandelion in the water and paint with that. Um, so you could do something like that. You can do it with paint. It makes fun imprints too to do printing with them instead. Or you can uh, practice your letters, practice your writing. Another idea I saw that I thought was really cute was to um, put down some glue um, and spell out your child's name on paper, not on the sidewalk. <laughs> Should have mentioned that. Um, so put out some glue spelling your child's name and then letting them either find things in nature that they can stick to it to see if they can write their letters. Or if you have seeds from a couple years ago that maybe aren't going to grow, you can use some of those and make a seed name. And then that's a nice texture so that they can feel the letters of their name. All right. I hope that that gives you plenty of ideas. If you are running out of ideas and I just didn't give you enough, you can just Google gardening with children and you will be set. Lots of activities there. I really hope that this gives you some fun ideas and ways that you can incorporate our early literacy skills of read, write, talk, sing, play with your child and some early STEAM skills for science, technology, engineering, art, and math. I hope that you are doing well. Please take care of each other. Know that we miss you and I will see you soon. Bye.